Here's our next example. It is 60x to the third minus 50x squared. We want to factor and we're looking for the GCF. My approach is to start with just the coefficients. I'm just looking at the 60 and the 50 and thinking about the biggest number that we could evenly divide out of both 60 and 50. And so 10 is going to be our best choice. So I have that out front. Next, we're going to look at the variables. So from the first term, we have x to the third, which is basically three x's multiplied together. Second term has x squared, two x's multiplied together. So we're thinking about when we put it out front with the GCF, it's a factor that we could take from both terms. So looking at our first term that has basically this supply of three x's, and our second term has a supply of two x's, how many x's could we take from both terms, the first group and the second group? And we could take two x's from each spot before we would run out back here. So out of the three x's here, we're going to take two. And out of these two, we're going to take them both. And there is our x squared out front. Now be cautious that it looks like we took two from the first term and two from the second term. And that's like a total of four. But it's not about the total. It's about how many can we take from each place. And from each place, we can take two. And so it's an x squared out front in the GCF. So we have the set of parentheses. And now just think about what are the terms that we need to have inside the parentheses. You could think of it like distribute. Like if we had to take this 10x squared and multiply it to the first term inside, what do I need to see in this spot so that that multiplication would equal 60x to the third? And I'll even think about this, just the numbers first and then the variables. So 10 times what will get us up to 60? And then x squared times how many more x's will get us to x cubed, three x's. So if we have two of them out front, we need to see one more inside to give us that total of three x's. So the 10 times 6 is the 60. x squared with one more x is our x to the third, the x cubed. So what about the second term? 10 times what will get us to this negative 50? So I think we're going to need to see a negative sign in the parentheses. So we've got a negative 5. x squared, we want when we do this multiply to end up with a term that has an x squared. So we don't need any more x's. We have x squared. We have two of them. We want to end with two of them. So no more x's needed here. So this is it in factored form. We found the GCF, 10x squared. And the terms left over from the first, it was 6x. From the second term, it was negative 5. Um, one thing we can do is just sort of a quick check. Did we find the GCF? Look at what we have in parentheses. If you can look at the terms that we have in parentheses and you don't see any more common factors, that's a good sign that we did find the greatest common factor out front. OK, another example blown up a little bit. We've got numbers that are a little bit larger. We've got two different variables in the picture. We're thinking about the GCF. And I have the same approach. I want to think about just the numbers first, and then I'll deal with the x's, and then I'll finish by dealing with the y's. Now, we, when it was 60 and 50 with that previous, previous example, it was maybe quick and easy to see that the largest number we could divide out of the two was 10. With these numbers, it's maybe not so clear. So what we can do when we have numbers where it's not it's not doesn't jump out at us what that greatest common factor is, then we're just going to look at the prime factors. So I'll take the 84 and break this down into prime factors. And I went for 2 and 42, and the 2 is a prime. 42, I broke that down as 2 and 21. And then the 21 is 3 and 7. So hopefully, you are coming up with, for prime factors of 84, 2, 2, 3, and 7. And it does not matter how we break it down. It doesn't have to be. 2 and 42, it can be 7 and 12. It does not matter how you break it down initially, just make sure that everything is broken down until you have only prime factors. We'll do the same with 28 and prime factors of 28. I've got 2, 2, and 7. And then we'll take the coefficient of the third term, 14, and break it down as 2 and 7. So thinking about the GCF is thinking, what are the factors we can find in all three of these coefficients? What are the what factor could we maybe take away from all three of these spots? 
So we can take away from each one a 2. There's a 2, a 2, a 2. And so into the GCF, we have 1, 2, saying that we took a 2 from each spot. Can we take anything else? Yep, we can take a 7. So cross out a 7 from each spot. So now our GCF is made up of a 1, 2, and 1, 7. And looking at these lists, we don't have any factors that we can take from all three lists. You're maybe looking at that 2 and that 2, but if it's a GCF, it has to come from all three terms. And we actually ran out of factors here, so we're not going to be able to take anything from 14, so definitely we're finished. We're not going to be able to take any more factors from all three terms. So the, the 2 and the 7, we want to multiply those together and get 14, and that 14 is the greatest common factor of 84, 28, and 14. So we'll put that out front as the beginning of our GCF. Let's talk about the variables. We have x to the third in the first term, x to the fifth in the second term, and x squared in the third term. And we don't have to write these x's out three times and five times and two times. If it's helpful, of course, you can definitely do that. But what we're really thinking about is how many x's can we take away from all three of these places? It has to be the same number of x's we take away from all three places, and we want to take until we run out. So there's three here and five here and only two back here. So this is the spot that's going to run out the quickest when we only take after we take away just two. So the shortcut here when we're dealing with the variables is find the smallest exponent. So out of the three, the five, and the two, there's our smallest. And that's telling us that our GCF can have, at the most, only two x's. So we have an x squared in the GCF. Same approach for the y's. So where is our smallest exponent? The middle term and the last term both have y squared. So that's the maximum number of y's we can take and put out into the GCF. So there is our y squared. So the GCF from these three terms is 14x squared y squared. We'll get this set of parentheses open and think about what terms do we need to have inside the parentheses so that a distribute would give us an answer like this trinomial that we started with. You can do a couple you can do it in a couple different ways. You can look at this first term. If we want to know what should be the first term here, we can say take your first term and divide out the 14x squared y squared from this first term. 84 divided by 14 will give us 6 x to the third divided by x squared is going to leave us with 1x. And y to the fourth divided by y squared will leave us with 2y's, y squared. Uh, if you are doing these trees, something that's maybe more helpful or, or quicker for you is to look at the factors that are left over. What was left over from 84? 2 and 3. And 2 times 3 is that 6 right there. So let's do the same approach for the middle term. 14, how about this for an idea? 14 times what equals negative 28? So I'll go for negative 2. x squared times how many more x's do we need here to end up with 5? So we need 3 more x's. And how about the y's? y squared, we want to end up at y squared. So we don't need any more y's in the middle term. So we've got the first term, the middle term. Definitely, you can look at how many terms you start with, and when you bring out a GCF, you're still going to have three terms in parentheses. If you start with three, you'll have three terms in parentheses. However many you start with, you still need to see that number of terms in parentheses. So what if we're looking at this third term and seeing 14x squared y squared and saying, I took it all, I have it all out front. Well, a distribute, if we don't have that third term there, how is our distribute going to end up with a 14x squared y squared in the answer? And what we have to do for these cases where it looks like we took everything into the GCF, you need to put back a 1. That's how our multiplication is going to give us back that third term. If you don't have that plus 1, this term disappears, so we're not accurate. So there is our factored form. The GCF is out front. And left over in parentheses, we have these three terms. And if we were to do a distribute here, we would come up with this trinomial for our answer. So we have it factored.